You know, the cross represents death, doesn't it? The cross is where Jesus died. And death is kind of like, I mean, death is, death is the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> you know, death is the end of you. Death is the end of you being you. Death is the end of the self. You can't be you if you're dead. <laughs> and so death represents this power that nobody has the strength to overcome, which is why most people have a very sort of fear of death. I mean, everything connected to death, sickness, our worry, we, we worry about our loved ones, we think about those that we care for. Death is, is the one thing that humanity cannot cope with, cannot deal with, until of course, Jesus. You see, Jesus goes to the cross, goes to encounter death, death which swallows up everything that comes to it, death which swallows up every bit of life. But what happens is that Jesus goes to the cross and sure, we get forgiven and he dies and takes all of our sin upon him and things like that. But, but also what happens is that, that death is unable to swallow life for the first time. Death realizes that it is no match because as it tries to overwhelm the life in Christ, the, the, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, it is like death, instead of swallowing life, life begins to swallow death. Death has been extinguished like a light in the darkness. No matter how dark it is, the light opens up the darkness. That's what it says in John 1. It says, wow, this, this light, the light of the world, the light of Christ has come into the world. Darkness couldn't overcome it. And so on the cross, what happens is that the very thing that is supposed to be like the antithesis of, of who you are, of you being you, of you fulfilling your potential, of you being happy, death represents everything that is the opposite of life, of course, and the opposite of the true you, because you are supposed to be alive. God created you to live forever. God put his breath, his spirit in us that we would experience eternal life. John 10, 10, I've come to bring life and life to the full. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus has come to bring life because God has always been about giving life. God created you so that he could share his life with, with us. And so on the cross, death is swallowed up by life. And God just does something fantastic. And we need to understand what takes place here. It's because, because God is like a poet. God is an artist. God is he's imaginative. God is a, a storyteller. And in that moment, God thinks, I got a great idea. Why don't we take the very thing that has kept humanity from being alive, the very finality that no one could overcome, as he overcomes it, he picks up death like, like an instrument, like a pen, like a paintbrush. He says, you know what we're going to do? Is you shall be my instrument for redeeming humanity. And he takes the cross and he says, friends, this is how you overcome the death in you. This is how you overcome the flesh and sin. This is how you overcome the very thing. He takes the cross and he says, what I want you to do is I want you to come to the cross. He says, if you will just allow the self to be crucified, you will experience life and you will become more you than you have ever been before. God doesn't want less of you. He wants more of you. As we come to the cross, we understand that the cross is not the end. The cross becomes a tool. The cross becomes an instrument that God uses for his glory. You see the cross, I mean, sure, it's painful, <laughs> but the cross is not really a place of pain for us. The cross is a place of freedom. The cross is our key to get rid of the bits of the mind that we do not want to have. I wanna to talk to you about how that works. Because as we talk about self-care, the big question is, which part of me am I supposed to keep and which part of me am I supposed to kill? <laughs> which part of me am I supposed to care for and which part of me am I supposed to crucify? The mechanism by which we experience transformation in the mind is through the cross. Here's how it works. The cross is how we experience transformation. 
It begins with honesty and self-awareness. That's how we know which bit of us is supposed to die on the inside. Again, I'm talking about the spiritual part of us. I'm not saying anything weird. Please don't misquote me. But we, we have to deny ourselves. There is a part of us that needs denying. The only way you're going to know is, is first you've got to read the Word of God. Because this is the filter that is perfect. This is the filter that is not me imprinting my ideas onto it, saying, well, that part of me is all right, and I don't, I'm not so sure about that bit, and I'll make a bit of an excuse over here. No, we've got to understand, we've got to allow the Word of God to purify us, and we come to a place of both honesty and self-awareness. We become aware of self. That's what self-awareness means. And as we become aware of self, we're going to start to become aware of the reality that there are parts of us that are good, that are from God, parts of us that have been redeemed, parts of us that we like, and parts of us that God likes. And there are parts of us that we think, I'm not sure about that part. And the, and the, the reality is in the moment, we don't go around going, oh, I'm a dreadful person. Oh, look at that bit. We, we normally actually tend to make excuses. And the thing is, is whatever you excuse, you're never going to take to the cross because you don't think it's worthy of killing. And so you're probably going to end up caring for it. And we see that in our world today, a lot of people who talk about self-care, often it's, it's not self-care. Often it's sometimes a self-obsession. It's a self-pity. It's an indulgence of self that is not healthy or helpful. Because all it does is strengthen the flesh on the inside of us. And so we get more of the things that we don't want in our mind. But Jesus says, no, I want, I, you, there's parts of you that do need to go to the cross so that you can become fully you. So that you can experience the, the you-ness of you, the uniqueness of who I want you to be, the person that I created, the person that I imagined. There's been some corruption. There's been some stuff that has taken you away. You see, with Christ, we don't become less of who we are. We become more of who we are. God draws out the truest reality of who we are in Christ. And we don't lose our personality. We don't lose our humor. We don't lose our identity. It actually gets strengthened. It actually becomes stronger. And people go, wow, you, you're an interesting person. People should be around Christians and not think they're boring or bland or, or just like a, a copy of every other Christian, but they should be authentically them, but authentically the right part of them, <laughs> not the part of them that needs to go to the cross. See, there's parts of every single person that need to go to the cross.